بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد These Mubarak days, the month of mercy, forgiveness and emancipation from the fire of Jahannam are all opportunities in the khazana and treasures of Allah to give us a boost now that we come into the end of Ramadan, we need to check the end. At what level have we built our ruhaniyat, our spirituality? In a race, it doesn't matter who ran what way. The bottom line is on the finishing line. Where do I come out? So on this finishing line, on the climax of Ramadan, what level, what's my taluk at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Then in the end of the year, what level I am, and on my last breath, what level I am on, my taluk at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we have to have direction, we have to have focus. More words than a person that doesn't know direction is a person who doesn't know his destination. You meet somebody, you lost where you're going to Durban. Okay, this is the directions. You still get to his destination no matter how lost he is. Meet somebody else, where you're going to, I don't know. I'm just driving. I know I need to get somewhere, but I don't know where I'm going. So it's better to move at the speed of a tortoise in the right direction, you'll reach your destination. You can move at the speed of lightning in the wrong direction, we will never reach our destination. So our focus is La ilaha illallah, I need to find my Allah, Muhammadur Rasulullah, on a pattern of Janab Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Malana Yusuf Rahmatullah used to say, we all must in the Baytullah. You say when you see Makkah, when you see the Baytullah, that's the effort of La ilaha illallah. When Nabi alayhi salam and Sahaba went through untoiled sacrifices to learn this Iman, to learn this Yaqeen and the Zat of Allah. Then when the Awamir were revealed, Muhammadur Rasulullah, every command of Allah was followed. Whether it was the command of Hijab and wherever the Sahabiyat were, they never moved. Whether it was the command of alcohol and they had alcohol in their mouths, they never drank a sup. They were ready to comply with Allah's awamir at every given time. So we need to be checking ourselves all the time. Am I ready for the end game, the end goal, the end target? Am I making adequate preparations? Mashaikh say, Hirfatul Arif, Sittatul Ashya. The sign that a person is now reaching his objective, getting to his destination, and he's on the right road is six things. إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهِ إِفْتَخَرَ When he hears the name of Allah, he's filled with envy. He's filled with the grandeur of Allah. He feels proud that he hears Allah. إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهِ وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ When the name of Allah is taken, like when somebody loves somebody and you hear their name, automatically you freeze. Automatically memories come to you. Likewise, the friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you generally when we are traveling and children see a very nice car, there's a Ferrari, everybody, the whole road stops. Just the word Ferrari. Now wherever that car is going, everybody now wants to observe. So the friends of Allah, when the name of Allah is taken, although they are remembering Allah, they remember Allah more. Now they're trying to ponder on the greatness of Allah. Iftakhara. They remember the azmat and the greatness of Allah. Secondly, وَإِذَا ذُكِرَ نَفْسُهُ اَهْتَقَرَ And when his name is mentioned, when he's praised, when he's told you this and this and you have this and this yeah, he becomes more humble, he becomes more low because he realizes how insignificant he is. And likewise, he channels the praises to Allah because he realizes that all praise that is on me now, that is directed to me, is because of Allah. So he becomes humble and he says, Ya Allah, it's only because of you I have this. Number three, When he sees the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he contemplates and he takes lesson. And currently now, who would have ever fathomed and thought the entire world would have stopped to a dead stop. Would have thought markets would have crashed. Would have thought great, great airlines that had big, big forecasts would be on the brink of bankruptcy. 
who would have thought that big, big economies would have been brought to their knees, who would have even thought the Baytullah, the Masajid of Allah would have been closed, who would have thought that I would be making mushra and thinking, what's going to happen with our Taraweeh, our Khatam of Quran, our Eid Salat? Who would have thought that there wouldn't have even been enough people to be at the Janazah and Namaz? Forget that, that there would be mass graves and people would have to be buried like that. Who would have thought that superpowers would of the world would be on the brink of collapse? Wamin ayati, these are all signs. Fatabiru, ya ulil albab, fatabiru, ya ulil absar. O people who have intelligence and intellect, what sign is left to come before you to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Wa idha hamma bi ma'asiyatin, fourth sign, O shahwatin, in zajara, the friends of Allah. When there is an opportunity to commit guna or follow their desires and ambitions in zajara, they suppress it, they, res they restrain their nafs, they rebuke it, and they reprimand their nafs. In the nafs al ammaratun bisu, O nafs, who do you think you are addressing? Who do you think you're going to deceive? Iblis, I know your plan, I know your end game, I have my focus. My vision, my heart, my zat, my being, my attention, my tawajju, my concern is Allah. I will not falter, I will not slip. And if I do slip, the khazana and the treasure of Allah of Tawbah and Maghfirat is so great. I will turn back when I just make that mistake. I will realize, and the Shaykh Ulama explain that what is Tawbah? Tawbah is a rujum. When a person is lost and they are looking for directions and they find somebody who's going to give them the correct directions and give them the correct guidance, then they become happy that now we know we will find our destination. Malana Sayyid Khan used to say, we are blind, we are blind and the people of Batil, the West are blind. He said, Nabi alayhi salatu was salam, Allah had showed him the treasures of this earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had showed him Jannat and Jahannam. Allah had showed him the way to show mankind to Jannah, salvation in dunya and akhirah. He was a visionary, he had vision, he had basirat. We are blind, we supposed to be holding the hand of Janabi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But we have opted to hold the hands of the West. He said, a blind man who's asking a blind man for directions and holds his hands, he will fall in a hole and take everybody else with him in the hole. Let us hold on to the hands of that visionary, Khairul Khalaik, the best individual that has ever set foot on this earth, Janabi Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So they say, a taib. When a person makes a mistake, is a taib min shay'in ila shay'in. When you're at one spot and you need to take your steps back and get back to the correct position. So you come out of the darkness and you come back onto the light, the road where you should have been. We've taken the wrong detour, we off the highway. I need to get back to the highway. min al awsafil madmuma. All bad qualities. Dislike, sifat and qualities, hatred, malice, enmity, etc. And we return back to ila awsafil mahmuda, praiseworthy qualities of humbleness, generosity, tawadu, etc. All these good qualities. Raji amma nahallahu anhu. A person now returns from the road of all the forbidden things from music, backbiting, Ghiba haram ila amrihi to the road of the awamir and the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ma'asiyatihi from the road of disobedience ila qa'atihi to the road of the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa amma yakrahu from the road of what Allah dislikes what does my Allah dislike I need to stay far away from that ila ma yallah 
to the road which shall make my Allah happy. Ruju min abad ila azbab al wadad and returning from all the false idols to the true beloved Allah. Ruju ilayhi wa ila taatihi and returning to the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa taala after obeying Allah subhanahu wa taala. That's why they say who one is a taib. One is a munib and one is awab. One is just to make toba. One is to incline to Allah. That we decide, okay, I need to change. And one is awab, a person who excessively uh, exhausts all avenues to find us Allah. فَمَنْ رَجَعَ عَنْ مُخَالَفَاتِ خَوْفًا مِنْ عَذَابِ اللَّهِ Somebody fears that if I commit this guna, Allah's azab will fall on me. So because of the azab and the fear, he will turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is ta'ib. فَمَنْ رَجَعَ حَيَاءً فَهُوَ مُنِيبٌ And somebody who feels shame. They say, if ever you want to commit a guna, then look إِلَى الْأَرْضِ Look to the ground. See how many dead bodies and dead people have passed away. And they are in their qubur. The good are enjoying jannah. And the evil are suffering the torments of the qabr. Look to the ground. And ask yourself, am I ready for this? And if that's not sufficient more than lesson, فَانْذُرْ إِلَى مَنْ فِي السَّمَا Then look into the skies and know Allah, know the farishas, know kiram and katibin are looking at you. They are observing you. Haya and have modesty for the farishas. They said you will create fitna and fasad on the earth. And you will break Allah's awamir. Have haya. Have haya for Allah. Have haya. Mullah Ali Qari Rahmatullah Ali say, What is haya? Allah yaraka maulaka haythu nahaka. Where Allah has forbidden you. Allah has stopped you from doing something. You feel ashamed. When the parents are at home, the children are shy to come at a guna. At least they have that awareness that I cannot, I won't commit a guna in front of my parents. They might do it in the darkness of the night. They might do it in the absence, but they won't do it in front of Allah. And the last one is Awab. وَمَنْ رَجَعَ تَعْذِيمًا لِجَلَالِ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ فَتَعَلَى فَهُوْ أَوَّاب And whoever turns away from guna because he has the azmat and the diyan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala فَهُوْ أَوَّاب he is amongst the special servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when this opportunity comes, he turns away from ma'asiyat. Number five, وَإِذَا ذَكَرَ اللَّهِ اسْتَبْشَرَ And when the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioned, he feels happy, he rejoices. Why? Because when he takes the name of Allah, he feels happy that Allah gave me tawfiq to take his name. Like how when we get an invitation, a presidential invitation, we get an invitation from a king, then forget entering the castle. Just the fact that the letter came from the king is sufficient for us to rejoice. The fact that Allah has given me tawfiq to take his name is a ni'mat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the last quality, وَإِذَا ذَكَرَ ذُنُوبَهُ when he remembers the disobedience that he did in front of Allah, istaghfara, he constantly repents and turns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ready to forgive us. That door of tawbah, that door of maghfirat is in front of us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is min qibalil maghrib babun khalaq Allahu li tawbah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created a door for Tawbah and Masira ta sab'ina sana. Its distance is 70 years or 40 years. La yazalu maftuhan hatta tatla'u shams min maghribiha. Until the sun does not rise from the west, the door is open for Tawbah. Inna allaha yaqbalu Tawbah al-abdi ma lam yugharghir. And secondly, until the slew doesn't reach our last breath, the doors of Tawbah are there. At-ta'ibu min al-dhambi kamalla dhamba lahu. 
a person who makes Toba, it's erased, the, the, the files are deleted, the system is formatted completely. As it Yahya bin Muaz, Razi you say, Ilahi, Kad Anzalta Ilayna Rahmatan Wahidatan. You have just descended one mercy on this earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had created a hundred mercy. Wanzala ila al ardi juz an wahidan. And for this earth, all the mercy that is seen is one mercy. Ninety-nine mercies Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept for him for akhirat. So he said, Wa akram tana bitilka rahma wa hil islam. Allah, if there's one mercy, you are so generous that you gave us Iman and Islam. فَإِذَا أَنزَلْتَ عَلَيْنَا مِئَةَ رَحْمَةً When you send it hundred mercies on the day of Qiyamah, فَكَيْفَ لَا نَرْجُوا مَغْفِرَتَكَ How can we not have hope for your mercy? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so merciful. He is ready to forgive us. He said that there was one person he committed so much guna that he was he had lost hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he told his family, when I die, burn my body and throw half the ashes in the sea and the other half on the land. When he passed away, his family did that. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked him, وَمَا حَمَلَكَ عَلَى مَا سَنَعْتَهُ Why did you do that? What was your motive? Allah knows best. But this is for us to take lesson. He said, مَخَافَتُكَ يَا رَبِّي يَا لَا I feared you, I feared adab. I knew I did wrong, Ya Allah. This was the only way I could show you I was sincere. فَغَفَرَ اللَّهُ لَكَ فَغَفَرَ اللَّهُ لَهُ بِذَلِكَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave him just on that one action. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Dawood alayhi salam wahi bashiri al-mudhnibeen give clear tidings to the sinners wa anthiri siddiqeen and give warning to those who are obeying me. He said, how will I give glad tidings and warning? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that no sin is too big for me to forgive and a person who is pious should never take pride on his good actions. So we should always be hopeful, no matter how much sins, how much guna a person is committing, we should never ever have, lose hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the month of maghfirat, this is the month of getting that special door of Allah opened for our akhirat. The dua for today is to read the third kalima. Subhanallah walhamdulillah wa la ilaha illallah wallahu akbar. This hadith is in Tirmizi, Nasai, it's an authentic riwayah. Whoever has Sabbaha lillahi mi'ata bil ghatati wa mi'a bil ashi. Whoever says in the morning and evening, one riwayat before sunrise and before sunset. You said Subhanallah a hundred times, kaman hajja mi'a hajja, like he has performed a hundred hajj. And whoever says a hundred times, Alhamdulillah, كَمَنْ حَمَلَ عَلَى مِئَةِ فَرَسٍ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ He will get the reward of preparing a hundred horses to strive in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ كَمَنْ أَعْتَقَ مِئَةَ رَقَبَةٍ مِّمْ وَلَدِ إِسْمَعِيلِ Like freeing a hundred slaves from the progeny of Ismail alayhi salam. وَمَنْ كَبَّرَ مِئَةَ And to say Alhamdulillah a hundred times. لَمْ يَأْتِي فِي ذَلِكَ الْيَوْمِ أَحَدٌ Nobody will have any more reward in a day of Qiyamah. Like anybody saying this hundred, all who will do more. And then we will continue of the fadail of saying, وَلَا حَوْلَ وَلَا قُوَّةَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ Likewise, the fadail of Tahajjud, Mu'adh al-Adawiyyah used to say in the day, هَذَا يَوْمُ الَّذِي أَمُوتُ فِي It's possible I die. فَمَا تَدْعَمُ حَتَّى تُمْسِي She would not do anything, no eating, etc. and carry on in ibadah till the night. When the night should come, هَذِهِ لَيْلَةِ الَّتِي أَمُوتُ فِيهِ And it's possible I will die. She will stand in ibadah till the morning. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq of making amal wa akhiru da'wana. And alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.